Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School. This is a video on mole-to-mole -mole conversions. Um, we're in the topic of stoichiometry, and once again, we'll be using conversion factors to help to us get from one unit to another. Now, as a recap, um, we talked about the mole, right? And the mole is equivalent to Avogadro's number of particles. So anytime you want to change uh, molecules or formula units or whatever to the mole or back, you will use Avogadro's number. If you want to change um, a unit of mass, any type of mass in terms of grams, okay, to moles or back, you would use something called molar mass or GFM. All right. And also in class, we discussed the fact that in terms of gas, right, at standard temperature and pressure, right, you will use the number 22.4 liters, okay? Anytime you want to go from moles, moles of gas, okay, to liters of gas or back, you will use 22.4 liters. So once again, GFM, 22.4 liters, and Avogadro's number help us go back and forth with the mole to these units. Okay, now in mole-to-mole -mole conversions, it's absolutely essential that we have a balanced equation, okay, because we will use that to change uh, moles of one substance into moles of a another substance, okay, so we must use a balanced equation, and our conversion factors, as always, should be equivalent. Now, as I said before, we need a balanced equation to do multiple -mole conversions. We will set up our conversion factors as before. Okay, so we know we have our parentheses. We know we have our lines separating our numerator and our denominator. Um, as we always do, right, the desired units, whatever units you're looking for, goes in the numerator, goes on top. Okay, and whatever they give you, okay, the given units, you put that on the outside. And in order to cancel that, you must have the same units in the bottom so that these two can cancel. Now, once again, I will do an example to um, clarify this on the next page, so uh, don't panic. And one more essential thing, in terms of the balance equation, right? The ratio, okay, the ratio in the conversion factor, which is this, must, must, must come from the balance equation. And we'll use the coefficients from the balance equation to um, help us do the conversion. Now, what do we have here? We have some examples. We have A, B, C, and D. They're all the same equation. So you can pause the video really quick and see how you do in terms of setting up your conversion factor in terms of getting your answer. Okay, um, the first one. It says, right, you have three moles, okay, of P407. So what you do, okay, you simply look at this equation, okay, you will always be given an equation. It can be in like in this form or it can be in writing, but you must make sure that it's balanced. You check it real quick, make sure it's balanced. So I'm going to assume right now this equation is balanced because they have coefficient in front already. If it doesn't have coefficient in front, you should make sh just check and make sure that um, your equation is balanced. So they gave you three moles of P407. Okay, tetraphosphorus heptoxide. And they're asking you, right, how many moles of P3 or 4 can be produced or made. So what you simply do is you set up a conversion factor, okay, as before, and you have your separation line for your numerator and denominator. So what are we looking for? We are looking for moles of P3 or 4. You put that in the top. So you put moles... P three O four in the top. Okay. Now on the outside, what goes on the outside? Yes, you put three moles. Okay, of P four O seven on the outside. Now, why do you put it on the inside? Because this is what they gave you that goes on the outside. Why does this go on top? Because that's what you're trying to find. Now, the next step is to get rid of this unit right here. So we put the same unit in the bottom, moles, okay, of P407. Now, what we have to do now, we need numbers to go in front of these guys right here. Now, remember, it must be equivalent, and the equivalency comes from the balanced equation. We will look at the coefficients. So you find where P304 is, 
Okay, P3 or 4 is right here. And the number in front of it, the coefficient is 8. So 8 goes there. All right? And you find P407. P47 is over here. You put a 6 in the bottom. So 8 and 6 are the coefficients that go in the conversion factor that will help us solve our problem. Now what's going to happen next simply is this. Moles P47, moles P47 will cancel. You have 3, you have 8, and you have 6 right here. So you can simply say 3 into 6 is 2. 2 into 8 equals to 4. That's your answer for moles of P304. And you're done. Okay, next one. This one is saying now, if you have 5 moles of P47, how many moles of P304 are produced? So, same principle. You set your conversion factor up, separation line, you're looking for moles of P304, that's your desired unit. Okay, you put 5 moles of P4. 07 on the outside because that was given to you. You want to get rid of it, so you put moles of P407 in the bottom, right? Now, once again, you need your coefficients from the balance equation to put in front here and here, right? So, as before, you put 8 in front of the P304 because that's what's in front of P304. You put a 6 right here, okay? Now, what happens next? Um, the moles of P47 cancel. Okay, you do your multiply cross. 5 times 8 is 40. Divided by 6 is approximately to one decimal place. 6.7 moles of P304. Okay, and you're done. Next one. You are trying to find how many moles of P407 this time. So once again, it's the same, same principle. You put your parentheses, you put your dividing line, you're looking for moles of P407, right? You're given three moles, okay, of P304. So what happens next? You put moles of the same thing, moles of P3, whoops, P3, O4 in the bottom, okay? And you need numbers in front of these guys. Now what goes in front of P407? P407 is right here. 6 goes in front of that. What goes in front of P304? You look at your equation, 8 goes in front of that. So you notice it's there flipped around from the previous examples. Okay, so moles P304, moles P304, they will cancel. Okay, so you have 3 times 6, that's 18. 18 divided by 8 is approximately 2.25, or if you want to go to one decimal place, 2.3. Okay, the answer is in moles, okay, of the substance P407, okay, and you're done, you move on. All right, guys, last one. Now, this time, we want to make or produce three moles of oxygen, all right, and they're saying how many moles of P47 are produced. So, we're given, right, three moles of oxygen, and we want to see how much P47 we need to do that, all right? So you simply put your conversion factor, dividing line. Okay, you're looking for this. How many moles of this guy? So you put that guy in the top, moles of P407 in the top. You put three moles of O2 on the outside. You put moles, same thing, of O2 in the bottom. Now you look at your balanced equation, right? You see what's in front of P407, it is 6, you put a 6 right there, you look what is in front of oxygen this time, it's 5, so you put a 5 right there. Alright, moles oxygen, moles oxygen will cancel. We have 3, we have 6, you multiply those guys, that's 18, 18 divided by 5 is approximately 3.5. 
3.6. Okay, and that would be 3.6 moles of P47. Okay, whoops, seven. Okay, that will be needed to produce three moles of oxygen, and you're done. All right, guys. As always, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. We did um, a couple of examples of multimoles conversions. They're very, 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 very simple. But what's going to happen? We're going to use these multimole conversions with um, a concept we learned before. These guys right here to do some more complex, a little more complex um, conversions. But um, it's not going to be a big problem. Don't panic. Take care.